Hi, good morning, my friends. I hope you are having a wonderful Thursday so far. I wanna give us a couple seconds for people to hop on, but today we're gonna to be chatting about the first things to do when you get engaged, and they might be a little bit untraditional or unconventional. If we are new friends, I am Kate. I am the owner and lead photographer of Clem Studios. We specialize in weddings, boudoir, and love stories. We're based out of the Green Bay, Wisconsin area. We have a studio just north of Green Bay, but we serve couples all over the world to document their wonderful, wild, adventurous love stories. We're actually headed to Jamaica next week for a wonderful celebration. Um, so I want to share a little bit about our approach to weddings, love stories, that kind of a thing, because I think that'll give an important background on why I think these specific items are the first things that you should do when you get engaged. We are very committed to making sure that our couples have a really authentic, honest, fun, and loving photography experience. We want their photos to be a reflection of who they truly are, rather than a simple cookie cutter, these are the 10 poses that we do every single time. Their hands go here. They look at each other like this. It's a very interactive, prompt-based, love-based experience. We look at the couple as a whole and the ways that they want to be photographed, the ways that they want to be remembered in life, because we know that a lot of times these photos are the starting chapters of their whole love story, the rest of their life. Their kids might see this, grandkids, nieces, nephews, that kind of thing. So it's really a legacy that they're creating. And we want to make sure that we do that justice and we do it right. So we approach every couple, every interaction differently, just really respecting who they are as individuals, seeing what their love story looks like, and just making sure that we can authentically and really lovingly document that for them. So that's how we approach the whole wedding journey is looking at the experience that the couple wants to have and the vision for their wedding day and really staying true to that and holding ourselves accountable for that and providing them with any support that they need to make that happen too. One of the things that I hear most often is from, frankly, people that don't work with us <laughs> um, is, you know, oh my gosh, I loved our engagement photos or our wedding photos. I'll go with the engagement photo story. I loved our engagement photos but we were rushing on our way there to get ready. We were running late. We were arguing in the car. And, you know, that's just, that's all that I think about every time that I look at my engagement photos. And the reason that I find that interesting and I find that important is because a lot of times when we are either running late for an engagement session or we're arguing in the car with our significant other ahead of time on our way to the engagement session, or just feeling those little unsettling rumblings inside, that can be an indication that there was something else that our heart wanted us to do for our engagement session. Maybe it was the location we picked, maybe it's the activity that we're doing, that kind of thing. But our heart wanted us to do something else and we didn't listen to it. So now that's us recognizing that we're kind of out of alignment with what we truly wanted and what's actually happening. So it's a little bit of like a rebelling going on because when we are in total alignment with what we want from our wedding journey or the engagement session or whatever step in the process we're at, when we are aligned with that, we are doing what we truly want. That just doesn't happen. We make sure that we are on time. We are lit up. We are excited. Our partner is excited, which I promise it's possible for your partner to be excited for an engagement session, for the wedding, that kind of thing. When you really listen to what's important to you and what you want, it makes it that much easier. A wedding is only as stressful as you allow it to be. Kind of an unconventional thought, but I'm just putting it out there. And I'm going to explain why. This kind of leads into what I think are the first things that you should do when you get engaged. Congratulations to all of the people that have gotten engaged over this holiday season. We are in what those of us in the wedding industry call engagement season because about 30 or 40% of all engagements throughout the year happen between November and the end of February. So during that four month period is when 
30 to 40 percent of engagements are happening but that's because we've got valentine's day we've got christmas we've got new year's all the romance of being snuggled up in the snow and sleigh rides and all of that it's a really romantic time of year so we are in the heart of it so i want to say congrats to all of you that are newly engaged feel free to send me a photo of your ring too i love looking at new bling if you are probably going to get engaged soon since we are still again in engagement season congratulations to you too if you are just celebrating life as you are celebrating you as well um so the first things that i encourage couples to think about when they are newly engaged there's all this excitement people are asking questions you don't necessarily know where to start the first thing that you should look at is what is the experience that you want to have on your wedding day and also what are the experiences you don't want to have do you want to wake up and go have a really great breakfast with maybe your maid of honor or your mom, bridesmaids, maybe just you, have a nice, easy start to your day, have it be relaxed, have your hair and makeup get done for you, your photographer arrives, they start photographing your dress and your details, and then you get zipped up, maybe, oh, we have a friend that's about to join us for the live, this is gonna be my, my parrot kitty. <laughs> she likes to hang out by mom as much as she can. This is Penny. Penny, say hello to the internet. Um, you know, maybe you have a first look with your dad or your mom or your fiance, soon to be spouse. And then maybe you go take pictures. Maybe you have your ceremony. Maybe you take pictures afterwards. Maybe you're caught up in the excitement. There are so many people around you and it's loud and there's family everywhere and food and drinks are flowing. Maybe it's a really intimate affair and it's just the two of you on the edge of a mountain and then you get to go have a private chef catered meal. Whatever it is, think about what experience you truly want to be having on your wedding day. Beyond what tradition might tell you, what your parents, your friends might tell you, what is it that you want to have happen on your wedding day? And that of course is going to bring up what you don't want to have happen. So. Maybe you don't want a courthouse wedding. Maybe you do want a courthouse wedding. Wedding. Maybe you do or don't want wedding cake. Whatever it may be, start writing down what your do's and don'ts are. And with that, also think about what do you really love and what are your must-haves at your wedding. And what I mean by that is do you have to have um, you know, a certain venue? Or do you have to have a certain backdrop or a certain person marrying you or things like that? Think about what your non-negotiables are for your wedding day because that's what I want you to stay true to and aligned with and just remember, this is what I want. This is what will make me happy because guess what, guys? This wedding day is about the two of you. It's not about, you know, Susie Q over there or Cousin Mary who... Oh my gosh, I got married and this is what I did, so you have to do this. No, that might not be a fit for you guys. This is for the two of you. This is the time where you get to be, some people might call it selfish, I would call it focused on your relationship and the two of you and how you want to be celebrated. And I know that in my own wedding planning, I've gotten some pushback on that because we are very aligned in what truly matters to us, the experience that we want to have. And that's not always traditional and it can feel a little bit scary to buck tradition sometimes but when we're aligned with what's going to feel great with us that makes for an even better wedding experience so think about those must-haves what you really do love and this can lead into when you start thinking about the location that you want to get married at and your wedding date um i'll talk about this more in the next coming weeks and that kind of thing as far as picking a wedding date and location and that kind of thing um but you want to pick something that's going to light you up. Maybe, again, it might be the side of a mountain. Maybe it's the church that your parents got married in. For us, it's a brewery. That's just who we are. I promise it's only tea in this cup. Hold, please. But whatever speaks to you, whatever is going to have you so excited to have this be documented as the place that you got married, go with it. Same thing with your date. If you love winter and that is your favorite thing in the world, you love Christmas, that kind of thing, Think about a holiday wedding. Just because whatever percentage of weddings happen between like April and November here in the Midwest, 
that doesn't mean that you have to do it, my friend. Do whatever feels best for you. If you love summer, maybe 4th of July is your favorite holiday and you want to plan a 4th of July gathering and bonus the family gets together anyway, do it. The sky is literally the limit because you can do whatever you want. We only put our own limitations on what we think is possible for our wedding day. Anything is possible, guys. Um, so think about what you really love and what are your must-haves. From there, I would think about what, this is tip number three, if you're following along, what vendors or areas are really important to you? Think about what your priorities are as far as the people and the team that you want to have involved. If photography is really important to you, then I would put a lot of energy into finding the right photographer for you. If the backdrop and the place that you get married at is super important because you want to have everything all in one place, you'd love to have lodging on site, you want to have catering available as well from this you know, one place, and you want it to be in the mountains in Colorado, great. Put your time and energy into finding that perfect place for you. Um, you know, create a love list of vendors. If you've been stalking somebody on social media or Instagram and just, you know, double tapping the whole way because you love what they're about, put them on your love list. Reach out to them. For somebody that you think that you really resonate with, that you would love to work with, they're going to feel that energy. I can feel when a couple is super lit up to work with us because they love what we're about. And we love being able to give them an experience that just blows their minds. Other vendors are the same way too. So create that love list, reach out to them, share about your love story. Let them know, you know, I knew I loved my partner from this moment, the moment that we got engaged, I was, you know, crying or fell to my knees or whatever it may be. And then I got so excited thinking about wedding planning and thinking about the possibility of us working together. You know, are you available? What are your thoughts? Just ask the questions. There's no harm in reaching out, but really look at what's important to you vendor-wise and what's not important to you. Maybe it's, I mean, there are so many ways you could go with it. People love fresh flowers. People would prefer to have fake flowers. Some people have a videographer. Some people don't. Um, whatever it may be, know what your must-haves are with that and what is a lower priority for you or can have less of your attention. With that, and along the lines with vendors, you might say, well, Kate, so-and-so is definitely one of my loveless vendors, but they cost this amount of money, and I just don't know if that's possible. Tip number four, I would say, is set an overall budget with flexibility. I firmly believe that people will find the money for the things that they truly want. I'll give an example. Sometimes when Andy and I are wedding planning, I'll mention something to him and tell him the price. He's like, oh, it's kind of a lot of money, don't you think? Like, yeah, you know, we'll figure it out. I have full faith that I can, you know, create the income that I need to make this happen. But then Andy will say things like, oh, you know, I was kind of thinking that I might get a snowmobile to uh, for ice fishing and that kind of thing. What do you think? I'm like, hmm, that's interesting because, you know, just last week we were talking about X for the wedding and it was going to be this much that's less than the cost of your snowmobile and that seemed extravagant but for the snowmobile that's a reasonable purchase to you that kind of thing so it's not always the amount of money sometimes it's the justification of the purchase so i believe that if somebody truly wants something if there's a vendor that you truly want to work with you will do what's necessary to make it happen i realize that there are some you know realistic constraints if you're looking at a budget of $20,000 and I know there's this incredible, amazing photographer based out of uh, California. His wedding packages start at 20,000. So that may not be in alignment. So I realize that we have to be fairly realistic with this approach to the budget too, but go into your budget with some flexibility. We're looking at oftentimes a wedding planning process that's six months, a year, two years long. And who knows what funds you may come into, what job changes, what promotions you may have, what gifts you may get from parents or a wedding party or at a shower. Go into it, ask questions like if they have a payment plan available, you know, if there are any off-season discounts. I know some venues will do that and that kind of thing. Just ask the questions. There, If a vendor is truly heart-centered and aligned with you and your story, they're not going to say, you know, that's a dumb question. How dare you? that kind of thing, because they can feel that you intentionally want to work with them. 
So set an overall budget that gives you some flexibility, some wiggle room that really focuses on what your priorities are with your vendors, who your love list is, who your must-haves are, and then just kind of fill in the blanks from there. Tip number five would be get your ring insured. We got our rings through Kessler's, so they have a great warranty. The only thing they don't cover is if, I believe it's a like you totally lose your ring. So Jewelers Mutual is a great option for total loss, theft, that kind of thing. But either way, get your ring insured. There is nothing scarier than if you lost a diamond, scratches, nicks, that kind of thing, because this is a beautiful statement piece that your partner has chosen, or maybe you chose it, um, that you are now wearing. And to lose this exact ring could potentially be heartbreaking for some people. Or if you're planning on changing it down the road, either way, you've got it covered, get it insured. My sixth tip would be tune out the opinions that don't truly matter to you. I'm going to let that sink in for a sec. You still with me? Tune out those opinions that don't truly matter to you. That is an area that I see so much burden and stress being put on the couple when wedding planning, when they are thinking about and considering all these other outside opinions or you know, there's nothing wrong with asking in one of the social media groups, like, hey, what do you guys think? But inside yourself, oftentimes you truly know what your opinions are, what your thoughts are, what you would prefer. And it's just a matter of giving yourself permission to really trust that and believe in that and move forward with that. Again, this is a celebration of the two of you and the relationship that you've built the fact that you guys have found each other in this sea of billions of people, you have beautifully, magically come together, and this is the person that's going to make your life better, is maybe your best friend, your partner in crime. The fact that you two have found each other is so deserving of celebration, and it should be celebrated in the exact way that you want to be celebrated. I definitely think that there is some validity to, you know, asking parents what their opinions are, siblings for input, people who have, like, close friends who have already gotten married, that kind of thing. Hear them, thank them for their advice, and then follow what really inside feels good to you. I know that can sometimes be a little bit tricky with, you know, if parents are paying for part of the wedding, all of the wedding, that kind of thing, and sometimes it happens where in that situation, um, a parent might feel like they have a right to more of an opinion about how the day goes down. And we may feel, well, this isn't really what I want for my wedding day, but I kind of feel obligated because they're giving us such a generous financial gift. So I guess I'm just going to go with it, even though it's not what I want. With that, I think it would just be a matter of having a conversation of, we are so grateful for you. We are so appreciative of your support. You know, we could not do this without you, and we are so thankful. This is the way that we would like to be celebrated, and we just want to share this with you because we love you so much. We know that you love us in return, and we're hoping that, you know, you can help us out with this. You know, do you think that this is something that we can create together? And just really going into it with so much love because they love you so much that they're sharing this gift with you of finances and opinions and that kind of thing. So much love happens around wedding planning and a wedding journey. And it's just a matter of seeing that. Um, so just starting that conversation that way. And I know it doesn't always work out the way that we thought it would, but that's one way to help tune out those opinions that don't matter, getting people enrolled in what our vision is, what we truly want from that wedding journey. That's going to, again, have us be so much happier, so much more relaxed, and really just enjoying that journey that you're on for your wedding planning the whole way through. And my final tip would be celebrate often. You deserve all the free champagne, all the, you know, congratulations, the comments on social media, the hugs, the gifts. You are so deserving of all of that because, again, love is such a great phenomenon. The fact that you guys have found each other, it's just, it's magical, it's a miracle, it's a blessing, whatever you want to call it. Your love and the fact that you love another person, that's going to ripple out into the world. People feel that. People love love. You know, when people get engaged at a public place and there are people around, people are always 
clapping. I cry at every proposal that I watch, even if it's a stranger's video on social media, because you can feel that. You can feel somebody being so excited and realizing this is the next chapter in their life. People love love. Let yourself be celebrated. You are deserving of it. Pop those bottles. Have all of those party dances in your kitchen with your spouse and significant other to be. Um, and just soak it all up because this is such a truly magical time of your life. It is exciting. And again, it's only as stressful as we choose to make it. So quick recap of the first things that I think you should do when you get engaged. First, think about the experiences that you do and you don't want to have. And along with that, number two, what do you really love or what are your must-haves for your wedding? So this could be I want to be excited, I want it to be a party all day, I want there to be a ton of people, or I want to get up at 3 o'clock in the morning and hike to a mountaintop and have photos at sunrise. Think about all of that. Think about the locations that are going to light you up to get married at, the date, the time of year. Have a little bit of flexibility with that if you can when you're talking to vendors, especially if they are your tip number three, love list vendors. Because that way, that gives a little bit of wiggle room if there's somebody that you truly want to work with. If you're committed to just one date, that can sometimes be a little bit limiting. Um, but look at that. Look at the vendors in the areas that you really want to put priority on that are important to you and make that vendor love list. Tip number four to follow up with that, set an overall budget with flexibility. We can create whatever we set our minds to, whether it's a payment plan, additional funds, just have a little bit of flexibility with that overall budget if you're able to. Tip number five, get your ring insured. It's probably the one on this list that's uh, a little bit more traditional, but I think there's so much validity to it. Uh, tip number six, tune out the opinions that don't truly matter. Trust yourself, trust your gut, listen, and you are going to have the wedding of your dreams. And number seven, celebrate often. You are worthy of it. You are deserving, my friend, and that it's just such a gift that you guys have found each other and that you're choosing to celebrate the way that you are. If you have any questions on, you know, what you should be doing now that you're engaged, questions on vendors, what to start with when it comes to vendors, questions on wedding photography, feel free to reach out. I would love to connect with you if you are still looking for a wedding photographer. Again, we work all over the world and we would love to serve you and hear more about your love story and what you want your experience and vision to look like for your wedding day. All right, my friends, you have a fantastic weekend. All of my friends in Wisconsin and the Midwest, we got some nasty weather coming, so stay warm, stay safe, and I will talk to you all soon. Thank you so much for being on this journey with me. Bye.